It's a night over a century in the making for Cubs fans like Lisa Stegall. For her, a Cubs championship goes beyond breaking the curse. My grandfather was a big Cubs fan. He's not with us anymore, so I'm hoping they win tonight for him. We used to watch the games with him um, after school. When they used to play in the afternoons, they'd play, we'd come home from school, and that's when the Cubs would be on. So he'd be waiting at home for us, letting us know what the score was, and sitting there with us watching it. It seems he can't swing a dead cat without hitting a brewery in Grand Rapids. In fact, experts say there's been a more than 50% increase in Grand Rapids area breweries, bringing the number to 32. And there are two more slated to open in downtown Grand Rapids over the next few months. So I asked the experts, has there been too much growth? So we're at the point where we have a brewery on every corner, just like we have as many churches, we'll be all right. The excitement is hard to ignore here at the tasting event, where it is clear people are doing a lot of tasting. But will that sustain? The number of breweries has been growing year by year, though more slowly over the last couple of years, but still growing. It's really exciting times. Ben Darcy is an expert brewer who has founded Experience Beer, an industry coalition of beer business people in West Michigan. We still have quite a way to go, a ways to go in terms of saturation point, but the quality benchmark is so high in Grand Rapids. He says the growth will continue outward. We're going to keep opening breweries in more remote outlying locations. Steve Smith, a craft beer specialist and educator, said the limit is far from reached in Grand Rapids. Still a lot of room for growth, a lot of room for improvement as well. Uh, but no, I, I, I think we have plenty of space for, for good competition. People aren't looking for beer so much these days as they are looking for an experience. They want something unique and engaging and uplifting. But that doesn't mean just anyone can do it. When there's so many different breweries that are around now, if you don't have a hook, if you don't have an angle, something that separates you from all the other breweries, you're just kind of another brewery. I pleaded guilty to a DUI third offense. <clears throat> I apologize for my mistake. He spoke to us along with his attorney as he was checking back into jail, where he's allowed to leave every day on work release. A Kent County deputy arrested Greenwich in June after finding him sleeping behind the wheel of a pickup truck late at night along the road at Cherry Valley in 84. His blood alcohol level was 0.148, nearly twice the legal limit. Greenwich had been convicted of impaired driving in 2008 and drunk driving in 2010. For this, he was sentenced November 3rd, five days before the election, to two months in jail, despite letters of support, including one from former Michigan Lieutenant Governor Dick Postumus. Then yesterday, the village attorney asked him to step down. He stated he was uh, being asked by the village to send a recommendation to Governor Snyder to have him removed from office. Do you have any intention of stepping down? No, I do not. My conviction of the DUI has nothing to do with what I can do for the village and the people that live within there. I have a deep compassion for that town. I've lived there all my life. Greenwich says his conviction was no secret before the election, but the outgoing village president told us he didn't find out until after. I have no idea if it was to the voters, if they knew or not. Uh, um, I was unaware of it. He's a, a good, very good person, very well liked. Unfortunately, he's in a tough situation right now, and I think what has to happen is we just have to let the, the legal process take it, its uh, due course and see what happens. Greenwich says he'll be out of jail before his term starts. I have to go. To see his other youngest kids, it's been a long road. She was able to track down the man she had not seen since he went to prison after he turned to crime to support his addictions and ended up convicted of armed robbery, kidnapping, and weapons charges. When you shoot heroin, it gives you a false hope. The high I got today from them coming, no heroin, no alcohol, no words to express the high. Just before 9.15, the child was found. Unfortunately, saw the child on the top of the water. Coster said the child was about 6 to 10 feet from shore. The pond is at least 150 feet behind the home, through this cluttered backyard and across a grassy field. Rescuers tried to revive the child, but he would be pronounced dead at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital. Police were at the home again Saturday as the investigation continues. We saw police take the child's parents and another man away for questioning. An autopsy is being performed, police say.